has gone before. Komowa, konnichiwa, and Yabuso. We'll hear the Politechi talk about ESPN did a what with Robert Lee. Pretty sure his ancestry is of Chinese origin. Now an American Chinese. So, he's covering this as it's broke last night. Here's an older shot of him. He's kind of started out. Not trying to pile on the day after. I was waiting to see. There he is, more recently. Heard him do or watched him and heard some uh, less higher profile games. Says, this is, after all, the OMSR on YouTube, parent channel to the PTC. Anywho, saw a former FBI agent there talking about, or special Secret Service rather, how uh, Hillary is not that pleasant to work for, and Molly, good golly, one of my political girlfriends. I say that tongue in cheek, and with all due respect, most of these gals are. So here's the deal. Not trying to pile on the day after was trying to find other perspectives. That is the whole point of centricity. Both sides of the spectrum here. Whatever subject matter you're talking about. So ESPN this morning, Mike and Mike, <laughs> nothing. Shows after that, <laughs> nothing. Okay, so uh, reactions from last night and today, you know, this is gonna carry on for a couple more days I'm sure which speaks to you know the cause of the urban myth as verified thus well, I think you know, this is an important point to make about the sports media I think there's a lot of discussion Tucker all the time about how liberal the political media is recent studies you're gonna be blown away by this Do you know what percentage of people in the sports media voted for Donald Trump in this most recent election Four percent, Tucker. Ninety-six percent of people voted against Donald Trump. This is how decisions like this get made. I'm pretty sure you could take that fact at face value because that's been like sort of thought of by those of us who, who cover sports at the broader umbrella, the punditry industry, as it were, for lack of a better expression or phrase, has always been sort of left-leaning. But that's a pretty high percentile, and so. Yeah, you end up with situations like we're seeing here. I kind of find it, if not psychic, somewhat um, had my finger on the pulse long before any others. When it was just the OMSR and I was doing a little bit of politics on the side, why try to combine those two endeavors together on one channel, the, descript the descriptor, rather, going back five years, where it says, where sports and politics collide. I was speaking to the effect of politics within any organizational structure, sports included, not realizing that the Kaepernick's and now this, and what is next, would be coming up. And it, it was the sort of political climate where one could think, you know, if not for Benghazi or if Hillary Clinton could actually explain it without 10 different iterations and or renditions, subsection 1A, maybe she wouldn't make such a bad <clears throat> president. Hard to say straight face nowadays. All right. Thanks for watching. Silly DYs while you're out there. Roll clips. I got a Fox News alert. There are reports tonight that ESPN has pulled a football announcer from an upcoming game because of his name, which is Robert Lee. The twist? Lee is an Asian man, not exactly your vision of an unreconstructed confederate. Clay Travis is a journalist for Fox Sports, and he joins us tonight. Clay, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. So we saw this floating on the Internet right before airtime, and my instinct was this has got to be a hoax because it's too crazy. So we wanted to speak to you directly. What do you know about this? It's 100% true. Uh, and in fact, Tucker, ESPN has just issued a statement to me. If you want me to read it for you, I can do that. And the statement says as follows, and you may have it there to put on the screen as well. We collectively made the decision with Robert to switch games as the tragic events in Charlottesville were unfolding simply because of the coincidence of his name. In that moment, it felt right to all parties. It's a shame that this is even a topic of conversation. We regret that who calls play-by-play -play for a football comp game has become an issue. Is there any indication of how it became an issue? That suggests that, that some group had complained about having an Asian man named Robert Lee call a game. Do they I say this? discussion mutual within the company? I think they sat down with him and contemplated whether it was going to be awkward for somebody to be named Robert Lee to appear on uh, that the show calling the game. 
I think it's a sign of how ridiculous and absurd society has become that they made the decision that it was the right move to do this as opposed to just allowing people out there to think, you know what? This guy's probably not a Robert E. Lee ancestor, given the fact that he's an Asian guy, and also that it's been, you know, 150 some odd years since Robert E. Lee died. I think it's probably time we could get over it for a football game. Yeah, there he is. There's a picture of him right there. That is not the man who commanded the armies of the Confederacy, just so you know. Like, not 22 year olds. These are executives? Yeah, I think it was executive consultation with the Robert Lee himself. Now, I don't know who would have had the final call. Uh, I, I don't think it was necessarily a mandate, but I think this is kind of an indictment of ESPN in general, right? Because what you need in this situation is somebody to be a reasonable person and say, wait a minute, do we really think that the average viewer is going to make the connection between an Asian guy calling a game and the former leader of the Army of Northern Virginia? Uh, in the Confederacy, in the Confederate Army. Do we really think this is a political statement that we're making? This makes it a bigger story than it ever would have been for an hour. People maybe made jokes about how Robert E. Lee snuck back into Charlottesville despite the fact that he was controversial. Instead, now we're probably going to be talking about how absurd this decision is for ESPN for a couple of days, to be honest. And frankly, it's emblematic of the world we've become that Onion headlines are even too ridiculous for real life headlines now. But it's also cruel, and there's a principle at stake. I mean, even if it was Robert E. Lee's great-grandson, he didn't do anything wrong, and you shouldn't punish people for something they didn't do. You shouldn't punish people because they look like someone else or sound like someone else. They're in a certain group. You should treat people as individuals. This is grotesque. D does this make you, I mean, amen. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to lecture, but it, it does feel like one of those moments where, man, maybe things really are coming apart. Maybe the adults are crazy. Well, I think you, this is an important point to make about the sports media. I think there's a lot of discussion, Tucker, all the time about how liberal the political media is. Recent studies, you're going to be blown away by this. Do you know what percentage of people in the sports media voted for Donald Trump in this most recent election? 4%, Tucker. 96% of people voted against Donald Trump. This is how decisions like this get made. You have all these left-wing people sitting around saying, oh, my God, we're going to offend somebody and you don't have a reasonable, rational, middle-of-the-road person saying, wait a minute, are we really making the right decision here, or are we making this situation worse and making the country worse? Because people are just going to look at this and say, what in the world has happened? All right. So sorry, ESPN says we can't have a sideline reporter by the name of Robert Lee at the University of Virginia Games, so we're going to send him to Ohio instead and bring in somebody else. We're not making that up. In the, the wake people of Ohio are much stronger than the people of Virginia, evidently, according to ESPN. They can handle it. Well, can a former Secret Service agent and New York City Police Department officer and host of the Renegade Republican, Dan Bongino, join us from Florida to handle it? Dan, what do you think about uh, ESPN saying, oh, the folk can't handle it? Okay, let me just lay this out there. When I saw this on the news last night, on my life, I swear I thought this story was fake. I said, this is The Onion, this is a sarcastic <laughs> and website, and, and they're playing us all for fools. They want us as conservatives to retweet this and make idiots out of us later. The fact that this is true says to me one thing. We have finally reached peak stupid on the left. <laughs> I cannot believe this is a real story where identity politics has reached such a crescendo of stupidity that an Asian-American sideline reporter is removed from a broadcast because they're afraid of offending some liberal college snowflakes on a campus? Guys, this is literally the definition of insanity. We have reached such irrationality. And one, one last thing on this. Why are we paying attention to these people anymore? They are clearly irrational. America just needs to en masse ignore these people. Who, who, who are you talking about, Dan? Offended about anymore? Are you talking about the I'm left? ESPN? Who? Yes. Yes, I'm talking about the left because when ESPN's statement was very telling on this, their statement was that they're unsure why this is a controversy, but they did it to kind of avoid any controversy. It's a controversy because you were afraid the left would be offended. Why do you care? This is completely irrational. What does, it say about it's the left, Asian... what does it say about the left that everyone has to be so worried that they're going to spin the story or make it worse? 
Do you know what it says about the left? It says that they are so desperate to convince America that their fringe positions, right, their, their love affair with wars on women, wars on police officers, uh, you know, transgender bathroom usage, the tearing down of Confederate statues, you know, spray painting uh, Lincoln statues with KKK and stuff like this, that doing all of this, that this is a, a position widely held by Americans. And what, why, that's, you know, why they've been able to do that is because you have people like ESPN executives who feed into this. ESPN under fire for what some say is taking political correctness too far. The network pulled one of its announcers from calling a University of Virginia football game in Charlottesville next month. He's been assigned elsewhere. The reason is his name is Robert Lee, similar to the Confederate General Robert E. Lee. But this is Robert Lee, the Asian American sports reporter. The network is standing by its decision. In a statement, it says, we collectively made the decision with Robert to switch games as the tragic events in Charlottesville were unfolding, simply because of the coincidence of his name. In that moment, it felt right to all parties. It's a shame that this is even a topic of conversation, and we regret that who calls play-by-play -play for a football game has become an issue. For more on this, we're joined by Pablo Manriquez, former DNC staffer, and Molly Hemingway, senior editor for The Federalist and a Fox News contributor. Welcome to you both. Morning, Shannon and Molly. Okay, so uh, ESPN says it's a shame that this is even a topic of conversation. We regret that it's become an issue. Molly, who made it an issue? These statements from ESPN are not helping them. I mean, this is a story that's almost hard to believe is real. And in fact, I didn't believe it was real when I first heard it. Nor did this I. Is <laughs> and then to say that they, they don't like that it's becoming a situation, when they're the ones who made it a situation. And yet it is sort of the logical dead end of the cultural revolution that we're in right now. It begins with toppling statues, it goes after markers, and now apparently sort of sharing a similarity with a name is enough to get you pulled from doing a broadcast. Well, Pablo, first of all, I, I don't know your reaction. It felt very The Onion to me when I read it. I didn't right. want to get punked because I thought we're being led along here until I saw the official statement from ESPN. But I have to ask you, do you think that anyone watching or listening to this UVA game, I cannot wait for college football, um, would have said, oh, that announcer's name is Robert Lee. I cannot imagine there would have been one person who, I, maybe I'm wrong. I could right. Wrong. It, it seems like a very strange set of circumstances. I am kind of curious if it seems to me like maybe ESPN is suffering from what the Trump administration has been suffering a lot from, and that's leaks. I mean, it seems to me like a situation where a guy who's been named Robert Lee his whole life kind of saw that maybe he could be turned into a meme, went to his supervisor, said, hey, can I switch out for another game? And then it leaked. Uh, that, that's to me what it sounds like, and now, like, you know, everybody's kind of circling the wagons. That's, kind of, and, that's quite a Nancy Drew theory. Actually, I mean, I like those I mean, myself. Actually, wow. That, okay. I, mean, I, 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 know what it's like, yeah. I know what it's like to uh, be made a meme of you. <laughs> But that's a butter, right, Molly? ESPN actually came out with a statement saying they were the ones that approached Robert Lee and asked him to pull himself from the broadcast, and then they said he eventually agreed to it, which yeah. sounds like they put pressure on him. But the thing is, what's so ridiculous Whoa. about it is Robert Lee is such a common name. I have encountered probably hundreds of Robert Lees, and nobody associates Robert Lee with Robert E. Lee. I actually live right. in Virginia. I hear people talk about Robert E. Lee. I've never heard a single Virginian refer to the, to the general as anything other than Robert E. Lee. And so this is, I mean, it's just, it, is, it boggles the mind how ESPN management could not know their history and also have such disdain for their viewers that they think that they're going to be confused about whether a Confederate general that died in 1870 is somehow related to the guy broadcasting this game. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying not to laugh because this is underlying this is a serious conversation and subject, but have we gotten so ridiculously fragile that things like this happen and people think it's, you know, not unusual? Frankly, I would like to see Robert Lee announce the game, but I would also like to know Robert Lee's version of the story because I'm, I know that uh, I, I saw the statement from ESPN, but I also saw um, some emails that came out from sort of unnamed sources in ESPN who said that it was actually Mr. Lee's decision. So I think that there's still some confusion here. Um, and then when the facts emerge, I think it's going to be a big nothing burger at the end of the day that is underlying a very serious conversation that's going on, a uh, political conversation in this country. But um, overall, you know, I, I think that this is a situation where ESPN definitely kind of uh, got out in front of itself and maybe could have made uh, better decisions or at least kept these uh, conversations internal. Well, I, you know, Molly, I had somebody send me um, a tweet sort of facetiously today of a Wikipedia entry of someone named James Brown, again, a common name, um, but dating back to this guy who was 1700s, 1800s, noting that he was a slave owner and asking whether James Brown, the well-loved broadcaster, would somehow be pulled uh, from some sort of broadcast. I mean, it, it sounds ridiculous, but it's actually happening. 
Well, there, and there is actually this level of sensitivity on college campuses, and what's really important is to recognize it as insidious and not bring it to the corporate realm and not let it spread, this idea that you can be triggered by someone sharing a slightly similar, you know, sharing a name is just madness, and it should not be treated as a legitimate point of view, because it's not. Do you yeah. agree, Pablo? I agree. I mean, football should be about the game. It should be about the pride in your university and so on, and I really think that this is distracting from um, you know, UVA, which should be a good team again this year. Um, but, you know, overall, I do agree with what Molly's saying. This is, this is, um, this, this strikes me as a corporate nothing burger in the midst of, uh, of a cultural firestorm. Well, it does remind me we are just days away from kicking off the college football season. Cannot wait. Go uh, Irish. Molly, <laughs> go Knowles. Molly, we want to give you an uh, opportunity to. <laughs> Okay. I was just going to say, go, go University of Colorado Buffalo. So. All right. Thank oh. you, guys. Good to see you. Thank you. Oh, my new political girlfriend. <laughs>